previous section we discussed about the hardware that we could have a single cpu or multiple cpu or different uh, cpus with different number of cores those are working together and connected through a shared network so now coming to an operating system structure uh, the job of operating system as we have discussed is to efficiently use all the resources so our hardware uh, is our uh, resource which uh, operating system has to manage by running multiple programs processes threads uh, of operating system so in that we actually uh, say that uh, the computer or the central processing unit should not be kept for running only one particular application or program and should not be acquired by a single user so in multi programming environment it actually organizes the jobs in a way that cpu is always busy so it's basically we would be focusing on 100 percent utilization of hardware or cpu by stacking the jobs in a way so that each time whenever a process is uh, completed or is waiting for the ios operations it has to be switched and replaced by another process so that cpu is never idle and a subset of total jobs are kept in memory so we have a limited ram and we try to fill that ram as much as we can so that the number of operations could be run simultaneously or that concept is called concurrency so with that we will discuss also so one job selected per run by job scheduling so job schedulers job is to create that queue where and how the cpu would be utilized to its maximum power so it has to wait so whenever a job is waiting for for example for io operation operating system switches that to another job operating system assigns uh, cpu another job uh, which would start execution and take control of the processor another uh, variation or addition or extension to multi-programming system is multitasking and time sh or time sharing which is a logical extension of multi-programming environment where cpu switches the jobs so frequently that user interacts with each job while it is running creating an interactive computing so this is more focused on giving a response better response time to user so that the user is not aware whether uh, the computer is running one process or could be running multiple process so as we we can see we run multiple applications together but those are not happening purely in parallel those are happening concurrently so something time sharing and multitasking is based on current current principles so we can run concurrently many processes uh, but in a way that gives us <clears throat> gives the user uh, a best response time so it should be something minimum in milliseconds or less than a second so each user has one program to execute in a memory which is called process that we would be discussing and if the several jobs are ready to run at same time then we have to perform on the operating system to perform CPU scheduling. Uh, its scheduler would actually assign the priorities how and which job would be executed next. Uh, if processes does not fit, like the, we have a limited RAM, and if all the processes does not fit into the memory, then we perform swapping to move in and move out those uh, the processes which are there. And in case we are not able to uh, utilize and put those operations in the memory then there is a concept of virtual memory that or logically expands in some portion of the program into the ram and rest into the virtual memory so we will discuss this also and it is a very important uh, uh, part of operating system so here is a uh, diagram of how the, the jobs are filled into ram so there is some space is occupied by operating system and then there are a number of jobs those are stacked in in the ram which are currently under execution Moving forward, we have processes running. So there are two types of processes. Those are running, which are basically operating system processes. And then we have user defined processes to secure uh, the operating system so that a user process should not uh, create trouble for uh, operating system processes. There are different modes those are used. So the basic uh, mode is dual mode operation, which allows you the operating system to protect itself and other system components from the user defined program so it may be possible that a user tries to indulge into the kernel program and then you know corrupt your whole of the operating system so for doing and for handling that and for protecting from it 
uh, there are two modes those are basically user mode and the kernel mode the kernel mode is uh, set up for running the kernel operating system operation and user mode is set up when when operating system or your computer is running user application so this could be distinguished by a flag bit which is called mode bit mode bit provided by hardware it provides the ability to distinguish between system running the user code and the kernel running and now whenever your computer starts your computer starts in the kernel mode because it starts a kernel so whenever uh, the kernel is running your operating system is running into kernel mode whenever a user inputs some uh, start some application or give some command to run something so uh, the mode changes to user mode now a user could request uh, some operations from the system uh, through using a system call so system call is the one which is used to call the operations of operating system uh, so system calls provide a mechanism basically so whenever a system call is done is there a user makes a system call it changes the mode to the kernel mode and once the operation is successfully done it returns uh, from the call and reset it to the user mode so, so there is a switching going on between user mode and the kernel mode based on the type of operation is done now there are some instructions those are designated as privilege instruction and can only be executed in the kernel mode so if a user tries to run certain commands which are privilege instructions that that would create a trap uh, for that would initiate a trap from the hardware and that allows the uh, basically ask the uh, operating system to stop and uh, vanish uh, the the process which initiated that privileged instruction so that there is a cycle for that too now as we are uh, we understood that there are two modes the user mode and the kernel mode then it could be possible that there are multiple modes available in different operating systems so it's basically uh, operating system feature which works closely with the hardware so increasing cpu support multi-mode operations are also available so whenever we are running a virtual machines and then they have another mode for that so so it has a more privileges than the user mode but less privileges than the kernel mode so now this uh, explains how the process basically runs from user mode to a kernel mode uh, so kernel is always running so as you see that uh, whenever a user process is start executing it calls for a system call and whenever there is a system call a trap is initiated so trap would actually uh, change the the mode from user mode to the kernel mode so this would actually execute that system call and returns the the result back to the to the user mode the user program and also set the mode bit is equals to one so for kernel mode the mode bit is zero and for user mode the mode bit is one let's move to the next topic of process management as we know that the operating system is uh, resource manager uh, whose responsibility is to manage the underlying hardware efficiently for running the applications which include the system programs as well as user defined programs now a program is basically an passive entity which cannot do anything if it does not uh, have if it is not allocated to the cpu so whenever a CPU a program is allocated to CPU it start running or execution then it becomes a process so a program under execution is called a process which becomes an active entity so program is a passive entity whereas a process is an active entity we will discuss this more in the coming chapters the process whenever it is executing it needs resources to accomplish its task like C it requires CPU it requires memory to be for storage it requires IO interface for inputting and outputting data and files to store the data. And then it has some requirement of initialization of data. So whenever a process is running, it acquires all those resources, those that are needed for its execution. So after the termination of process, these uh, resources can be reclaimed back by the operating system so that it could be allocated to another process. Uh, we discussed about context uh, concurrently running multiple system through by multi-programming uh, or multitasking environment so that that is basically a part of process management how we are swapping all those processes to use cpu efficiently now uh, a process can create a number of threads so threads you could consider as of now uh, are smaller portion of the process which are running again concurrently so a process can create a number of child 
processes, those are called threads. A single threaded process has one program counter that, that specifies the location of next instruction to execute. And the process executes the instruction sequentially one at a time until completion. So it's very much clear here that it is all the programs, those are under execution and become processed. And once they are processed, they are executed on a single core sequentially one at a time. Multi-threaded processor has, has one has one program counter per thread. So if it is 10 threads, so it has 10 program counters for each thread, for each of the thread. So typically a system has many processes, some users, some operating system running concurrently on one or more CPU. And concurrency is by multiplexing CPU among the processors. So it's basically a time sharing mechanism. A time sharing mechanism would actually allow the, you, the processes to share the CPU and in that actually helps in maximum CPU utilization. So there comes other, other concepts too. A process, so operating system in process management uh, activities, operating system is responsible for creating, creating and deleting both user and system processes, suspending and resuming processes, providing mechanism for process synchronization, like if there is one process which is dependent upon other process that is also provided by operating system, mechanism for process communication, and also if they're, they're the process processes or threads are sharing some resources, in that case, how the deadlock mechanism would be handling, like it's trying to uh, acquire uh, the same shared resources, but they are individually holding of the resources, those are required by the other processes. So we will discuss more on this. This is a very important concept of operating system deadlock mechanism. Uh, we certainly go into detail of that too. For executing a program or a part of program, the instructions must be uh, there. So the part of the, the process or the responsibility of memory management is that uh, all the data which is needed by a program must reside in the memory. Now the memory is a different type of memories uh, that we have already discussed. So it could be like we can discuss it here like in the main memory. So also the memory management determines what should reside in the memory and when it should reside reside in the memory. So this would actually optimize the CPU utilization and also responds to the users because there are two types of cycles which are there. So instruction fetch cycle and then data fetch cycle. So that instruction fetch cycle would actually fetch the information or instruction, put it into the, the cache and then to the register for executing the program where the data uh, cycles are basically reading the required data and writing back in the, the data. So it basically there are certain processes that those have to be run uh, concurrently as well as the response should be minimum. That's why there are different levels of hierarchy of storages are used to, to make the process and run the processes faster. The memory management activity keeps the track of which part of memory are currently being used and by who, by whom, and it also decided which processes and data move into and out of the memory. Uh, the memory management activity also look for allocating and deallocating the memory spaces. Those are needed as per requirement. Uh, other components of uh, memory management that is uh, called storage management, we have like, uh, and we used a different type of medium for storing the information. If we say you open your Windows machine, then you have files and folders. Those are basically units of storage. So those storage are to be mapped into the, the storage medium. The storage medium could be your main memory. The storage medium could be your secondary storage. It could be your uh, magnetic data determine who is allowed to access a particular file and folder. Its activity also include creating and deleting file directories, moving those files, manipulating that, those files and directories, mapping the files onto secondary storage, and then back up the files onto a non-volatile storage media. So all that comes under uh, memory management as well as storage management of the operating system part. So mass storage management includes uh, storing the data onto the disk because uh, there is some data which is which does not fit into the main memory and even the main memory is not persistent because it's a non-volatile so uh, management is uh, always required to uh, to store our data uh, what we have 
uh, processed and executed so it could be new data it could be old data but we have to store that data uh, the entire speed of the computer system is always dependent upon the maximum speed we can write into and read from the storage uh, system. Uh, the operating system also uh, include activities such as freeing the space uh, or from the secondary storage or disk storage, storage allocation and disk scheduling. This is also a very important component uh, which we will discuss later uh, down, the, the, down the subject. Uh, it may be also possible that we are not only using disk for storing the data, it could be optical storage and magnetic tape that are very cheap to store the data. Uh, so it may not be needed that that operating system should handle it. It may be up to the application program who are using it. They can handle and manage those to, those medias, but it can be still be managed by OS uh, operating systems. Uh, there are different varieties of magnetic and storage types which are available. But as an operating system, we are more concerned about the drivers which will be allocated and attached to a particular operating system. So the compatibility of the driver, this driver should be there so that it can actually map the logical uh, unit onto actual physical location of the data. The one component that is left is IO subsystem. So basically every operating system tries to hide uh, the particular or intrinsic details for the hardware of the devices from the user. So IO subsystem is basically managing the IO devices. So it is responsible for memory management of IOs, including buffering, caching, pooling, and also it, it manages for general device driver interface. So it allows for the device driver interface. And the most important part is a driver for a specific hardware. So whenever you install you want to plug in a new device into an operating system you have to install its device driver so these days uh, the devices come with their own flash memory so whenever you put in a usb of that particular device into your computer it actually install its device driver automatically uh, so we need not to install any information further and it is ready to use uh, so let's discuss about production and security uh, on an operating system and computer system. There are many uh, processes those are running and there are multiple users who are accessing a particular operating system or the computer system. So there is much requirement of production and security. So protection mechanism of operating system defined that control the access of the process and users to resource defined by operating system such as if a device control registers are not accessible to the register so the integrity of the various peripheral devices is protected and also similar is a memory addressing hardware ensures that the process can execute within its own address space so this mechanism is allowed for controlling the access of processors and user to the resources defined by the computer system uh, it may be possible that still we our system is prone to error or failure so we have to take appropriate measures so that we can identify if there is any flaw in an operating system. The security is whereas it's a defense mechanism, a defense to uh, protect the operating system from internal and external attacks. So some, some things are like the viruses and bombs and others are denial of service. So system uh, generally such as Linux system or uh, other operating system, they distinguish the users uh, uh, by their user IDs. Uh, Windows uses SID uh, that is called a security ID whereas Linux system Mac system they use uh, user ID so for each and every process file uh, and their access is determined by the user ID for giving an access to uh, a particular file not only user but a user can uh, allow other users so who come under a particular group so based on uh, based on that a file can be given as in a particular owner uh, permission or it could be given as in a group. So there are other options available to escalate uh, the user power, just like a pseudo user. Uh, if it belongs to a pseudo user group, then can install any software or uh, can perform some system-wide changes if the, the user is a part of that particular group. So those are some things called privilege escalations which are available, but those all are attached to a particular user ID. Uh, we will work on uh, Linux uh, operating system and then we'll get to know about these all user level uh, permissions and the permissions those are attached to a particular user and the file and the folders.